will take a question for those of us who have been bringing out, bringing our friends and family into the meta healings. How do we know when to stop without leaving them in a perpetual case of detox? This is especially true for friends and family we don't see very often, and therefore cannot tell their progress nor their emotional or detox states. It's really a good question. Um, one, uh, if you see them, obviously it's easier. Uh, two, <clears throat> because you can see the transformations in their lives, and as you get intuitive, you actually get to know what level they're at. So, uh, and then three, you should never um, continue on, you know, uh, unless you want to. Uh, but at some point, you have to say wean them off, especially if they've always been dependent on you. Uh, wean them off, and so they can do the 21 days on their own or um, do whatever they, they need to do on their own so they're self-sustaining. So the reason why, I think the real reason why you're asking is like, um, you know, you need to go faster. You've come to a point, it's like, you know what, uh, it's my turn now. It's my, say, journey. Um, and that's what's happening for you, which is which is fantastic. So for you, and others, uh, if you want to, um, you can still bring them in on the 21 days. Right? If you, again, it's all up to you. Uh, but imagine them not meditating next to you, but outside of your space and then far away, like, for example, wherever they live. Yeah. If they're not living with you. And even if they're living with you, again, they're meditating somewhere else, not around your fear, because we just talked about that, right, on how you bring that in. So it's very, very important. That's what I caution individuals that bring people in, because they usually bring them in with their sphere, so they start resonating like them. So, right. so again, always bring them outside of your sphere, unless they're your kids. Um, well, kids that are on the right path, so to speak, they need a little help. But if your kids are even distorted or your spouse is distorted, keep them out of your personal space. Okay. Um, if you're questioning, maybe it's time to let them go. You've created enough momentum for them where they would reach out. Uh, reach out to you. They will gravitate towards you, whatever it is, to get, go further. Uh, you open them enough, and that's what you want to do. The rest of the journey uh, is their choice. Okay. Uh, this is really interesting. So how does one maintain an intimate relationship with one's partner when focusing on our own individual frequencies and ascension? Uh, the blending of the two sometimes causes conflicts and confusion. True. To become intimate in a relationship and get really close, you have to be intimate with yourself. You don't lose yourself in one another. The reason why people feel so intimate and so connected, again, deep intimacy, is because that relationship defines who you are at a deeper level. If it doesn't, although it might feel intimate initially in a very short time, it's very destructive because you lose your identity in that other person, hence your situation, many people's situation. That's why intimacy feels fresh and good, because you're sensing the other person's frequencies, which is different than yours, hence fresh and good, even if it's abusive. It feels fresh and good because it's raw to you. It feels good. It brings you into the moment, hence raw. And then after time, it's like, shit, I lost myself. And then that intimacy just gets destroyed or wanes over time. So, again, the key is real intimacy. is about that person helping you define yourself even more. Okay? And as it does, you always want that other person. It's kind of strange because it helps you define who you are. But you need a person that need, that is definable on their own, does that make sense? So if you're, so what that means is like if you're solid, they're not. When you blend into them, you can't blend out and define yourself even more. 
because, well, they get lost in you, you get lost in them. So both individuals have to be at a certain level. So when you blend in and out of each other, you get to hone yourself on who's you and who's not. So, and that blending is the euphoric space. And then it's timeless. So in a XI or exponential intelligence relationship, um, no matter how many times you blend in and out of each other, it's euphoric because you're in a timeless state. It never wanes. It never gets old. It's timeless. That's true intimacy. Okay? Uh, you mentioned that your recordings take us back in time to when the recordings were made. Would it be possible for a recording uh, to take us backwards to reliving an issue that we thought we'd gotten past? Uh, yes. Uh, it has, that's the way it is. When, so when you, so the same way that, um, uh, the recordings bring you back to the time that it was made so you can feel the frequencies. Uh, and if you're in the group, obviously it's a more cleaner, pure recording, but there's enough people now that there's somebody that can say represent you, who you are, or what your issues are, or there could be a few of you representing one individual, right? So, so again, it is better. So, why I'm saying that is, one, the first few days of the meta healing is important to be uh, in live sessions because that's like a sample of, you know, the group, the mastermind, basically. Um, and then what happens, like many of you know, as you start resonating or as you start cleaning up, you start to notice that your dream states changing quite a bit because they're not dreams anymore. They literally is about you going back in time. Some of you going back in time um, in your family lineage or previous lifetime, however you want to say believe, believe that. So you might feel like it's a different person having a dream, although it feels familiar to you. The reason why it is familiar to you because say in your DNA or in your memory, you are a rendition of your family of the past, right? So that's why it feels familiar to you. Because you might have not had it, but you resonate, say, with that experience. That makes sense too. Same way you got your hair color, eye color. It's a rendition of I don't know, your your uncle or whoever, forty generations back. He had something to do with it. He had evolution. Same thing with experiences as well. So, um, some of the patterns that, and this is where it gets hard for people. Some of the patterns that you thought you let go through other forms, modalities, even the most popular ones today. I'm not going to name names, but who's ever out there now trying to help. And they do a great job, but I'm not saying they don't. Uh, but they're more of a, um, it's a surface layer. Uh, transformational individual. They don't go deep and say delete and reprogram. Oh, their content is good. Once you... <clears throat> say disconnect and delete you can use their content uh, to further progress you I don't give you say conscious level success mechanism stuff like that I mean I do but not if you want the nitty gritty Uh, the mechanics of this realm Mm -hmm. hopefully that makes sense Oh, yeah, so, um, sorry about that. Didn't answer the question. So, uh, again, if you th- thought you were over something. Uh, and it's coming up back for you. You're really getting rid of the underlying frequencies. This is the way I say, for example, addictions. This is why you're addicted in the first place. What is the underlying core level? Reason why you're addicted. And usually, uh, addiction, by the way, are more familial type patterns from what I'm seeing. 
So you'll go back. I'm probably reading the person now. So. I just stepped into Exxon space. I'm getting into deeper sense of awareness. It seems there is a freshness of everything that the eyes see. Yes, there is. Is this how it is? Yes. Deeply rooted is the key here. Uh, thanks for everything, Moss. Uh, exactly. Do you notice that uh, the awareness is that it's not time-based. Uh, it's that awareness or that stillness when you're in that moment goes beyond time. So you're seeing this reality from your higher self. So if you see your reality from a higher self, you always say appreciate everything that happens. Uh, and obviously those things that happen for you Uh, or to you um, you might not say prefer it to happen so as you notice it it goes away from you that makes sense but you still see say the beauty and grace in everything so that's a different form of non-judgment most people who are say distorted and then they try to be non-judgmental or, you know, politically correct. It doesn't work that way. The underlying frequencies in you is what counts. Everything else is just surface stuff. Everything else is say is just makeup or the clothes you wear, right? It's like many people, they change their clothes and they think they're somebody else. It's still the same person on the inside. So this, when you see things from that beauty, you're seeing it from your abundant space. And as you see it from an abundant space, one, those type of experience is negative, say, so to speak, in the physical world, will dissipate from you or doesn't affect you as you, say, transform into your higher self. You won't attract that anymore. And then two, um, you have a human quality about it. So it not only, say, dissipates from your reality, it dissipates from the consciousness of say man, or say your surroundings, but imagine if everybody resonated at that frequency. You'd have millions of people or billions of people resonate at that frequency. Imagine what will happen to the earth. It's true peace. Uh, no control. Nothing needed like that. You can see where real control happens. That's why the billionaires who, say, run the world control the system is through their intellect, their, I don't know, I don't want to even say power, because that's not even power, what they have. It's, it's a fiat power. Uh, their money, um, their governance, and all that. Uh, there's no power in that. They'll soon see that. Uh, there's no power in being, say, without money, either. You're just the opposite, by the way. You have to come into your power. Does that make sense to you? So don't feel good about not having money or not having whatever else. Say that the so-called elite have. You're not any better off. By the way. So it's about having that power from your true self. Okay? And that's the facade or lie as well. People know. That's politically incorrect as well. Um, so I was talking about the frequencies and many of you wrote in, so thank you. Uh, and somebody said, beautiful and masculine, thank you. And do you notice that masculine frequency? Um, there's a sense of strength in it, but uh, there's no, there's ego, but you know, it's a space of like standing on who you are. So to speak, and not the ego uh, that comes from, say, money or 
intelligence or a title or anything. So that's the kind you want. Women have that strength as well. Just a softer, say, version of it, a different version, not a weaker. The key is it's not a weaker version. It's just a different frequency. Just as potent, if not more, by the way. So, so notice that. And thanks for noticing. <clears throat> and as we end, uh, notice what you notice. And then notice the details of what you're doing.